Would you vote for anybody whose administration purposely drove up the cost of electricity? From October 17, this is important, 2008, what Obama said he would do. And I have it in full context, so I'm not accused of playing around with the clip. Cut nine, go. The problem is not technical, and the problem is not uh, you know, sufficient mastery of the legislative intricacies of Washington. The problem is, can you get the American people to say this is really important and force their representatives to do the right thing? Uh, that requires mobilizing a citizenry. That requires them understanding what is at stake. Uh, you know, and, and climate change is a great example. You know, when I was asked earlier about uh, the issue of coal, uh, you know, under my plan uh, of a cap and trade system, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket. Even, you know, regardless of what I say about whether coal is good or bad, because I'm capping greenhouse gases, coal powered plants. You know, natural gas, you name whatever the plants were, whatever the industry was, they would have to uh, retrofit their operations. That will cost money. They will pass that money on to consumers. They, you can already, uh, you can already see what the arguments are going to be during the general election. People will say, ah, Obama and Al Gore, these folks, they're going to destroy the economy. This is going to cost us eight trillion dollars or whatever their number is. Um, if you can't persuade the American people that Yes, there is going to be some increase in electricity rates on the front end. You but said skyrocket. Over the long term, because of combinations of more efficient energy usage and changing light bulbs and more efficient appliances. Yeah, that'll uh, do light bulbs. Let, let yeah. me technology improving ahead. how we can produce clean energy that the economy will benefit. If we can't make that argument persuasively enough, you, you, you can... Uh, you can be Lyndon Johnson. You can be the master of Washington. You're not going to get that done. And that long, rambling nonsense, you can see the man has no idea what he's doing. But he does know the consequences of what he's doing. That is why I'm playing that. Energy prices are going to, quote, skyrocket, unquote. That's three years ago. It's what he said. That's what's happening. And that was January 17, 2008. He said something else. Remember, coal is the primary source for electricity in this country. He said this. Cut 10. Go. Let, let me sort of describe my overall policy. I mean, what I've said is that we would put a... Uh, cap and trade system in place that is more that is as aggressive, if not more aggressive than anybody else is out there. I was the first to call for a 100 percent auction on the cap and trade system, uh, which means that every unit of carbon or greenhouse gases w was emitted would be charged uh, to the polluter. Stop, stop. Now think about that. Every unit of carbon dioxide emitted. Or, he says, greenhouse gas is emitted. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. So, in other words, every unit of water vapor emitted, since water vapor is the largest element in greenhouse gases, he's completely clueless. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. But he says that the quote-unquote polluter, that is anyone who emits water vapor or anything that emits water vapor, or carbon dioxide, which of course, as you know, is used by plants through photosynthesis to create oxygen. That's a polluter. So we're all walking, talking polluters. Our pets are polluters. Livestock, they're polluters. Endangered species, they're polluters. The man talking about. And you should be charged. He said 100% auction on the cap and trade system. In other words, he would charge for every unit of carbon or greenhouse gases emitted. That's what he said. That would destroy our industries. 
That would destroy our farmers. No way could they survive. And suddenly they're all going to be called polluters. A farmer is a polluter because he has livestock? Oh, and you're a polluter if you have a lot of kids, too. The more kids you have, the bigger polluter you are. Get it? Because they exhale after they breathe in. That's how sick this is. Go ahead, Mr. Producer. Uh, That will create a market in which whatever technologies are out there that are being presented, whatever power plants that are being built, that they would have to meet the the rigors of that market and and the ratcheted down uh, caps that are placed, uh, imposed every year. Stop. So whatever is being done out there, whatever is being built out there, whoever is doing whatever, I'm going to impose all these costs on you. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're doing. I have no idea how your industry works. I don't have a clue. It doesn't really matter, he says. I'm going to put a model that I've concocted between my ears on top of whatever you're doing, and I'm going to drive up your costs and, of course, drive many people out of business. This is what they've been doing at the Environmental Protection Agency. Go ahead. So if somebody wants to build a coal power plant, they can. It's just that it will bankrupt them because they're going to be charged a huge sum for all that uh, greenhouse gas that's being emitted. Somebody's going to build a coal power plant they can, but this will bankrupt them. We actually have a president, a federal government, that wants to bankrupt coal-powered plants that create electricity. Most of our plants that create electricity are coal-powered. We have so much coal in this nation. It's such a wonderful natural resource for us. And they write it off completely. So we're not going to use coal. So we're not going to drill in deep water. So we're not going to drill in new areas in and off Alaska. We're not going to drill off of California. We're not going to drill off of Florida. Well, where are we going to go? Mark, what are you talking about? U.S. News, Paul Bedard, a great reporter, he writes, two new EPA pollution regs will slam the coal industry so hard that hundreds of thousands of jobs will be lost. And electric rates will skyrocket 11 to 23 percent or more, according to a new study based on government data. Now, how much longer are some of you folks, not most of you, but you know who you are, going to suspend your ability to reason and just say this is inherited, this is an intentional, Everybody's out to get your hero, Obama, when in fact these are intentional, they're done with forethought, and it's part of an ideology. And by the way, while I'm at it, where are we going to get our electricity from? Where are we going to get our gas and oil from if this keeps up? How are we going to live? How are we going to produce if this keeps up? What exactly is the plan with this president? and his minions, when they're choking off energy production of all kinds, in all places. Overall, the rules aimed at making the air clearer could cost the coal-fired power plant industry $180 billion. Many of these severe impacts would hit families living in states already facing serious economic challenges, said Steve Miller, president of the American Coalition for clean coal electricity. Because of these impacts, EPA should make major changes to the proposed regulations before they're finalized, he said. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, the EPA says over time they're actually going to save $290 billion in annual health and welfare benefits. Actually, by 2014. Now, do you believe that for two seconds? No, of course you don't. That's just bullcrap. They pull these numbers out of their you-know-what, and they just throw them around. 
But there's an intentional desire now to put the coal industry out of business, just as there's an intentional desire to cripple our oil industry, not Brazil's, not China's, ours. How many more industries are we going to destroy? We're destroying the healthcare industry, the coal industry, the oil industry. And all those relate to a number of other things. Food, transportation. They, they drive up the cost of everything. So maybe let's keep a line open for the libs as we usually do, Mr. Producer and Mr. Call Screener. And I would like to hear a defender of Obama and his administration to explain to us how they expect us to get electricity, how they expect us to get natural gas, how they expect us to get oil, and to run the engine of this economy. And while we're at it, maybe you can explain to me how this helps the vast majority of the quote-unquote working people and quote-unquote middle class. I thought you guys were at war with the rich, the millionaires and the billionaires. Well, when you drive up the cost of electricity... It affects people who are having a tough time making ends meet. It affects the unemployed. It affects people who are losing their homes. It affects tens of millions of Americans. But they care about the coal miners, the ones who are going to put out of work, you know. They care about those guys on the oil rigs and gals. They're going to put them out of work, too. How about the truckers? How about the farmers? This is from Reuters. Gen On, that is an uh, energy company, Gen On Energy Inc. is going to shut seven mid-Atlantic coal power plants. What's going to happen one day, ladies and gentlemen? All this talk about electricity, electric cars, there's not going to be enough electricity. Our use of electricity is expanding with computers, among other things. So U.S. power generator Gen On Energy said it would deactivate 3,140 megawatts of mostly coal-fired generating capacity in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and New Jersey by 2015 due to more stringent federal environmental regs. Over the past few years, ener energy companies have announced the shutdown or planned retirement of more than 30,000 megawatts of coal-fired generation due to proposed more stringent federal environmental regulations and so forth. So we're blocking drilling, and we're blocking mining, and we're blocking electric. Now, PJM also operates the nation's biggest power grid covering all our parts of 13 U.S. Mid-Atlantic and Midwestern states. Midwest Generation, a unit of California power company Edison International, agreed to shut down two coal-fired power plants in Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, we have all these coal-fired power plants that are being shut down because they can't meet new federal regulation requirements. Here's an example of some that are coming. El Rama, Pennsylvania. They're shutting down a plant there in June. I thought I had here what these megawatts... Oh, here you go. One megawatt power is about 1,000 homes. So 30,000 megawatts shut down over the past few years. 30,000 times 1,000. What is that, Mr. Producer? It's a lot of homes, isn't it? That's a total, just in one big blow like that, of 3,140 megawatts, and remember, one watt, one megawatt is the equivalent of about 1,000 homes. These plants being shuttered, it's going on all over the country, all over the country. We are regressing. We are de-industrializing, if you will, our society. They can talk about wind and sun and algae, all they want. You can't touch it. You can't hold it. In other words, it's not a rational alternative right now. So they're shutting down drilling. They're not expanding it. He's a liar. Oh, may I say that? Yes, I may. They're shutting down existing coal-powered energy plants that create electricity. They're also attacking 
hydroelectric dams all over the country, which have been built over the last decades, I don't even know, going back since the New Deal, killing off farmers and farmland, and again, the production of electricity. It's a very, very serious matter. So let me tell you what's going to start happening. I don't know when, but it will. Brownouts. You're going to get more and more lectures about you got to reduce your electricity. You know, you people are just, you know, you're using too much electricity. We just have to get it for the environment's sake because there won't be enough. And then having sabotaged all these industries, Obama or his successor, uh, successor will come back and say, look, these industries aren't cutting it. They're ripping us off. They're not producing what the consumer needs. The federal government needs to step in even more. Isn't that what they do? We need an investigation on their profits, on the executives with their jets. Same propaganda over and over and over again. They sabotage these industries, and then they claim that they're ripping you off. Folks, energy companies are in the business to produce energy. That's what they do, just like automobile companies are in the business to create automobile companies, and candy companies are in the business to create candy. That's what they do. They don't want to create less. They want to move more product. I mean, after all, they're making requests for new leases. They're making requests to drill in places. And that's why to argue that they're not is just counterfactual. Who makes the most money every time the price of a gallon of gasoline goes up? Is it the oil company or government? Ding, ding, ding. If you said government... You're right. Who is it that's stopping these energy companies from doing more drilling and refining? Is it the government? Ding, ding, ding. You're right again. If the energy companies don't want to drill, why do they keep asking, if not begging, the Department of Interior and the Environmental Protection Agency to allow them to do it? Who is it that wants to open up Anwar? Is it the government or the energy companies? Who is it that wants to drill in the Gulf of Mexico? Is it the government or the energy companies? Who is it that wants to drill in the Great Lakes? Is it the government or the energy companies? The energy companies. So, Mr. Obama, being the genius that you clearly are not, if you're now complaining that these companies make more money when the price goes up, why don't you join the rest of us who believe in private property rights and you know and logic when it comes to the economy to help drive the prices down? More production, more refining, 